Do you have an Infinity, an Enigma, a Shaco, a 40 All Res Hoto, a 16 inch Sweat Hog, a 30 inch Meat Salami Stick? This video most likely will not be for you. In this one, we are going to cover the absolute basics on how to get into Diablo 2 Resurrected. If you're looking for a super beginner friendly build on how to build a incredibly budget conscious light sork that is effective and incredibly cheap to source, then this video is for you. Come on in. Going to break this video down into five parts and conveniently place timestamps below if you're looking for something in particular. The first two parts will discuss gear, specifically breakpoints and resistances. The third part will be our sweet, sweet Hazad, Emilio, or Durga. I guess you could say Wahid, but that'll be our mercenary component. Part four will be MF, aka Magic Finding, so you can get the sweet, sweet loot. And we will close this one out with part five, the locations you should be farming. This guide is for a super noob friendly lightning sork. This is gonna be covering my week one light sork from like a month and change ago, but hey, I've been busy with life. I wanna do videos again, so here we are. Lightning sorks are my bay. They're my favorite type of sork in the game for PVM. That's right, player versus monster, no PVE. There's no environment. You don't have to battle any rain or inclement weather in this game, it is just PVM or PVP, but we're not there yet. Let's get into the breakpoints that are oh so important for building any character in Diablo 2. While I'm discussing these first two parts here, I'm going to be putting pieces of gear on the screen so you can take a look to see what I'm using. Please remember this is week one gear, very, very underpowered, but also very, very cheap to get right now. You could find this character through in-game trading in like 30 seconds, or you could go on JSP and get it for like 10 forum gold. But JSP and forums is a topic for another discussion. Just know this gear is all super easy to self magic find or to trade for. We need to discuss breakpoints. Breakpoints are everything in this game. When it first came out, it was sort of like a limitation to the technical aspects, and I have no idea what I'm talking about because I don't know shit about coding. Excuse me, shint. We're making sure we play with our D2 Blizzard censorship approved words, so it's shint and a funkin' joke, so suck my dink. <laughs> All right, so uh, breakpoints. <laughs> so what are breakpoints? I keep saying that word and it sounds fancy. Back in the day, this game was technically limited or something with coding, I have no idea. It meant that adding 10% faster cast rate wouldn't just add 10% faster cast rate. There were breakpoints, they were hidden, people had to find them. And this means in order to get that sweet, sweet higher, faster cast rate or faster hit recovery, you need to cross certain thresholds Otherwise, you're gonna add FCR or FHR as it will be known for the rest of this video, and they will do absolutely nothing. The important breakpoints for Sorcerer's Faster Cast Rate are 63 and 105. Now, it's important to remember, Lightning and Chain Lightning also have their own unique set of Faster Cast Rate breakpoints, which is why the goal for a Lightning Sork is to hit 117% Faster Cast Rate or 200% Faster Cast Rate, and that just solves all your problems. You fly around the map because you don't give a funk, dude. Realistically, though, you do want 117% Faster Cast Rate. You want to be able to get that Lightning off quickly. And with FCR, you also are coming out of those frames faster if you have a higher FCR. With Lightning, it's a long move. You sit there and you cast it and you got zero FCR. You're going to be hanging out with your dink in your hand for far too long. In this setup I'm showing, I vacillate between 105 and 117 FCR. And that's primarily because of gear restrictions. Look, when this game was first out, I don't know if I should call it a ladder. It doesn't exist yet, but... When it was new and nobody had anything, finding the gear to get to 117 FCR was a bit expensive and hard to find. So I was vacillating back and forth, trying to squeeze out as much MF and FCR as possible. By this point, you should have no problem getting cheap, cheap, cheap loots that can bring you to that sweet succulent 117% FCR so you can zip around the map and have quick attacks with your lightning and chain lightning. Faster hit recovery is a bit more simple. If you are using spirit, both shield and weapon, you just smash through the 86 FHR breakpoint. So that's a good one to try to get. If you don't have Spirit Weapon, you're using something like Oculus or Hoto, don't worry about it. You can try to go for the 60, which will be 55 from your shield and a 5% FHR SC or Small Charm. Really easy to do, really inexpensive. And 60 is all you need on a Sork for PVM. You don't really get FHR locked is what I like to call it. Don't know the technical term, whatever. Funk off <laughs> and uh, 60 is more than enough to get hit and shrug it off and not just get zapped. Now that you know a little bit more about FHR, FCR, the important thresholds you need to cross to not suck major NAS, <laughs> you, need to, uh, you need to pay attention to the next piece of this video, which is all about the resistances. On your sorceress, basically regardless of what you do, you're gonna have poor defense, it's a way of life. Physical attacks, 
will absolutely dismantle you. That's sort of the beautiful part about having teleport. You really shouldn't be up close and personal. We'll get to the Merc after this section. Your mercenary is part of the reason why you don't get punched in the face. You absolutely always need good resistance. If you're playing on hell difficulty, trying to farm some sweet, supple, succulent loots, then uh, you're not going to have a good time if you have no resistance. Ideally, you want to have at least 40 all res in hell, which sounds difficult, but when you get better gear, all res is almost everywhere, and that threshold is not that hard to cross. If you don't have at least 40, 30-ish all res in hell mode, littlest of elemental attacks are going to really just hurt you decimate you in fact especially if you plan on doing any sort of chaos farming in act four trying to farm diablo for whatever the hell he's never going to drop because i have the worst rng in the game and i never find absolutely anything whenever i mf so i sold my mf sword so i can make a boson but <clears throat> we'll get there uh later so if you do like a chaos run you're going to see a lot of curses and enemy attacks which will lower your resistance and you are going to have a bad time your 20 all res is going to go from 20 to negative 50 and you are going to get absolutely hammered by elemental attacks. Long range elemental attacks are everywhere in this game. Unique elite enemies always have special effects that are going to hurt you when you hurt them. Like lightning enchanted, they're gonna zap, 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 zippity, zip, 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 zerp, and flurp in with the old zerp and flurp, and it doesn't feel good. You need those sweet resistances. All res is some of the most important gear you can have on your Sork, which is why I thoroughly recommend you save up, trade in game, MF, whatever you gotta do to get a Heart of the Oak. I cannot recommend that enough. The Oculus is dope and a cheaper option because there's no high runes in an Oculus. However, the Oculus does not give you 40 FCR, which is vital for our setup here, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We're not doing a 200 FCR build video here. This is a noob basic setup, which requires no high runes, no Oculus. I realized I forgot a part in our introduction, but we do need to go over the class tree and also the attributes. The attributes on a sorceress are incredibly easy. All you need to do is have enough strength to wield a spirit monarch, which is a humongous strength requirement, which sucks, but that's the lowest strength requirement possible for a four socket shield in the entire game. So you need to use a monarch and that means 156 strength. It hurts, it sucks, but you absolutely need it. Plus two skills, plus FCR, plus all that res is Bigly. After that, dump the rest in vitality. You're good to go on your stats. Easy peasy, no problem. There's an argument for max block to be used, but that's more of a PvP thing, so we're not going to touch that. Don't worry about dexterity. Don't worry about energy. This is kind of a tangent, but energy shields, sorks kind of suck for PvM. This is because mana burn elites are bugged. They didn't change this. They hit for like 256% multiplier. So any one tap from any sort of mana burn enemy is going to immediately delete all of your mana and it will be gone. It's not coming back on its own. And elites share their attributes with their minions. So the little minions can zap your mana. It's all bad. And if you're playing an ES Sork with nothing in a health, one tap, all mana gone. Another little tickle, <laughs> little tickle from something else is going to insta delete you. Would it heavily advise against doing energy shield? And I would advise against putting any points into energy. It is not worth it. Put it into vitality. Get that health up. For our class tree, light sorks are just damage, damage, damage. More levels equal more damage because of the synergies in the class tree. Before we get to the lightning part of the tree, we need to make sure we put a point into warmth. After warmth, we need to put a point into one of the frosty boy armors. There is merit to putting a point into any of them. They all have their own uses. But on a lightning sork, more levels equal more damage. We don't really have points to spare. So just go for the first one. It'll make it so that melee attacks on you will freeze enemies briefly. Also buffs up your defense a little bit, which is very helpful as well. And then we move on to the lightning tree. You don't need to put a point into thunderstorm down there. It's kind of helpful. It's more of an FHR check is what I call it. It's gonna put an enemy into a hit recovery frame. You're too close, man. They're gonna be staggered briefly and it might give you opportunity to either counterattack the one that's closest to you or to run away. But it is a luxury. It's kind of cool and normal. It'll one shot everything in normal basically. In hell mode, eh, kind of, it's nice. I like to use it because it looks cool, but if you don't want to use it, it's not vital. You have a lot of points that you need to allocate to other stuff, so if you don't want to put one point in there, I totally get it. We need to make sure we max out Charge Bolt, then we max out Lightning, then we max out Chain Lightning, then we max out Lightning Mastery. You could do that before Chain Lightning, it's your prerogative. And then we max out Nova. I think this build won't be finished until level 95, so Nova is the last one you want to do. Nova's cool, it looks tight, not that practical, and it only benefits lightning a little bit do the other ones first let's move on to the next part let's discuss our mercenary aka our merc aka my boy Hazard. 
On your sources, you have a couple different viable options for the mercenary you want to run. I personally would never steer away from the Actu Merc because of the auras. They are incredibly beneficial. But I know a lot of people have a solid argument for using an Act 5 Barbarian type Merc for a little tanky wanky or an Act 3 Caster Merc for a little more range damage. Both viable options as well, but we're going to be focusing on Act 2 here because they are my bay. My boy Hazad is always by my side. Cannot recommend him enough. My recommendation to you is to pick up an Act 2 Mercenary from either Normal, Nightmare, or Hell. Nightmare is going to be Holy Freeze, which is a fan favorite. And this is effective because it just gives your Mercenary the cold, time to chill out aura. It makes all the enemies that come into contact with your Mercenary. There's a nice girth to it. It's got some good distance on there. It'll make them slow down if they're not cold immune, where they can't really attack at their normal speed because they're frozen and very slow. I personally always run Defiance. That is going to be in either normal or hell difficulty the act two mercenary both defense mercs both are incredibly helpful in their own way but i like defiance because it makes your merc more tanky he's going to be up in the shint of it so more defense to him is always helpful and also if you're caught sleeping and you don't teleport away and you do get punched in the face by somebody with a huge melee weapon an enemy like the doom knights who really really hurt having that extra defense will keep you from getting one shot briefly going over our mercenary gear we want to have insight on there because we are broke in this video we don't want to be using infinity because i know most people don't have bear mall bear ist i don't care if you want to hear me say burr it's never going to happen it's bear like a big man with hair on his back he's a bear and uh so <laughs> we want to run the uh the f thresher on this i know those are a bit pricey you can do eth glosses Volge, eth anything really your mercenary doesn't have any items break so ethereal everything if you can't afford it there are some ias breakpoints for the mercenary that i will touch on briefly the reason why thresher is the most important to use and the best besides giant thresher but that's like a mathematical splitting hairs thing is because you get better ias or increased attack speed breakpoints with your mercenary on the thresher type of weapon the Colossus Fulge and the Cryptic Axe, very powerful, good damage dealing weapons, are much slower and they don't hit their breakpoints as quick. Big shout out and thank you to Korean BBQ on D2GSP. Appreciate you doing all the heavy lifting and giving me the brainless information that I don't even have to process and understanding the difference in attack speeds on a Merc's regular attack and on their jab move. This is just the top tier kind of stuff. Anything will work here. The inside is primarily to keep your mana going and also ideally to give you bonus ED, not erectile dysfunction, <laughs> but enhanced damage on your Merc. So he can actually punch his way out of his own problems occasionally. Again, some of these weapons, Eth CVs, Eth Threshers are expensive. Just get what you can find and count on the armor to keep your Merc alive. Speaking of armor, we want to run something on our Merc's head with Life Leech. This is the most important part of your Merc. If you can't afford Insight, you can't afford Infinity, you can't afford F Thresher, as long as he has a big, fat, juicy Life Leech on his head, that makes him so much tankier. I would recommend Tall's Mask. You can get one of those in-game so cheap. They're freaking everywhere by this point. That gives you 10% Life Leech on your Merc and 15% to all resistances, which is big. Tall's Mask is a game changer for your Merc, especially if you don't have any Life Leech right now. He's probably dying all the time, and you're like, what the funk is the problem here, boys? There are other options, of course. Crown of Thieves is a great, great option. Ethereal Crown of Thieves is huge defense, huge bonus to gold find, which means if your Merc kills stuff, they'll poop out more gold, and they can roll up to 12% life stolen per hit, which is a fatty bonus. So if you find a Crown of Thieves, great Merc hat. For the chest, you have so many options here. I'm going to say that if you're watching this, you probably can't afford a Fortitude with a high rune known as Low. Those are expensive, and maybe you don't have those. I personally don't bother running Fortitude because the bonuses are really nominal. Honestly, it's PVM. We're not doing PvP here. We don't need our Merc to do 15,000 damage with a 14-inch hog. It doesn't matter. So what I like to run, you can do Stone, you can do Treachery, or you can just honestly find anything Ethereal with Res and high defense you just want high defense and high res on your merc chest anything else is a bonus as long as you've given him enough life leech he should survive resistances and defense will support this so for your merc chest you really have so many options anything works just remember higher res higher defense will help keep him alive but because you're playing a sork and you have your beautiful teleport teleport away he will follow you like a sweet puppy dog who I was trying to think of a sexual innuendo for that, but I couldn't come up with one. He'll follow you. So teleport away, get him out of the action. Don't be afraid to hold shift and click and drink a potion for him. I like to keep multiple rows of full rejuvenations on my belt so I can pot him up when he's about to get ganked. 
Moving on to part four, which will cover MF. No, that's not muff. That's magic finding, my guy. We have a lot that could be said on magic finding percentages. I could listen to people argue about MF numbers all day. But TLDR, look at this graph. I don't know who made it. I can't give credit. I don't know if it's accurate. I have no proof against this, but I don't like talking about RNG because it makes me feel physically ill that people find bear runes, low runes, vex runes, ohm runes, sir runes, jaw runes, another pair. They find enigmas just on the ground. I haven't even found anything higher than a goal. I've been playing every day for six weeks. So I don't want to talk about RNG. I've tried high MF. I've tried low MF. I've tried fast kill speed. I've tried, uh, it just drives me nuts. <sighs> The goal with magic finding is to be around 200% magic find. That's where you start to see diminishing returns for your uniques and rares. That's a sweet number to have. If you don't have it, that's fine. The world will continue to spin. Focus up on having a high completion speed. You want to blow through runs faster. This is, we're talking like one in 50,000 chance to find it to SOJ. So look, it's going to take you a long time to find dope shit. If you, <clears throat> excuse me, dope shint. If you find it, great. If not, that sucks. Focus on killing stuff. Focus on surviving. If you MF it, they will come. 200 is a good number. Anything more than that is kind of a lost cause. And you don't want to sacrifice kill speed and survivability just to pump up your MF to a ridiculous amount. Some people will argue this point till they're blue in the face. I'm not going to. Let's move on to part five, locations. The cool thing about light sorks is that there is a little bit more versatility than I would argue the blizzard sorks or the blizzard fire sork combo kind of thing. Look, those those type of builds have their merit and they are very cool and you can make them better than this character if your heart desires. But I like light sorks because I know what I'm going to get into. I'm going to be doing my countess, my arcane sanctuary farming, my Mephisto. Sorry, I forgot about Andariel in Act 1. Like, bro, you can if you want. She has never dropped anything for me ever. Andariel is the worst, biggest waste of crap MF time, I swear to God. I don't know if it's like a meme the developers have coded her to only poop out super potions. I don't know. But I never find anything from her. I don't waste my time on it. Unless it's day one or two when maybe she'll drop... I want to say a V Magi, but I don't even think that's possible. So I don't waste my time with Andy ever, whatever. So I do Arcane Sanctuary for keys and the Countess for Terror keys. Arcane Sanctuary is the summoner for hate keys. Then I like to go to Act 3 Mephisto, who also never drops me anything. But we hit Mephisto. We open the chest behind Mephisto after killing him. It's technically a super chest. Has a high chance to drop some dope loots. Then we move on. We do Chaos. It sucks not having Infinity for Chaos runs because the little wispy boys are all light immune but once you have a strong enough merc weapon like an ethereal colossus Volge or an eth thresher insight he will be able to murder those things they have no health they're super weak they're the most fragile enemy in the chaos runs it just sucks you can't do anything what i would suggest when you're doing chaos runs is just give it the old zerp and flirt try to fly through there as quickly as possible pop in all the seals and get into diablo as quickly as possible stopping if you see elite enemies because they have a good chance to poop out some cool loots as well for grand vizier the leftmost seal sometimes he's gonna spawn freaking physical immune and then your merc can't do anything unless you're a god and you bust out the gavel of pain with the little level eight charge of amplified damage it'll break the physical immune so your merc can just tongue punch their fart boxes right through there no problem my guy dude set them down dude hazad's got this no problem gg np easy after that everything else is a breeze sometimes uh the guy on the furthest right list i can't even remember his name the winged freaking guy he will spawn lightning immune which kind of sucks but whatever hazad will handle it just always make sure if your merc is in a fight you're supporting by killing everything that is not lightning immune and don't be afraid to heal potion him by either dragging him over to his picture or holding shift and clicking to heal him up nice and plenty so he doesn't get murked. After I do chaos, I like to farm frigid highlands, killing Eldritch above to the north and then moving down to kill Shank. I do this even though I know nothing will drop from either of them at any point in time ever. They've never dropped me anything worth a shit, but people find high runes and all sorts of cool stuff. <clears throat> worth a shint sorry i'm trying to conform to blizzard's uh <laughs> censorship rules they never drop anything so go there if you want i don't know i kind of stopped doing it because it was just a waste then we move on we hit our sweet 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 pindle you should hopefully have all the anya quests done anya resistance quests are vital and she leaves the portal up there so you can go back even after you've completed the Anya quest and killed Nithaliac. After killing Pindle, which he also never drops anything, <laughs> then we move on. We go kill Nithaliac for D keys. Sometimes it sucks and he can spawn lightning immune, but you got Hazad. I would recommend running a nature's peace ring and killing all of the adds. That way your mark doesn't kill them because nature's peace will make it so Nithaliac won't corpse pop or detonate those things, which will definitely kill you. So if you have Nature's Peace, anything you kill will be safe 
impossible to corpse explode. But again, anything your merc kills does not get this privilege, and he will still be able to corpse explode your mercenary's kills. After Nithalaic, depending on your resistances, I really, really strongly cannot recommend having at least 75 light res if you're going to do solo bail runs. If you have that light res, souls are no problem. That's your biggest threat anyway. If you see souls though, and you don't have an infinity, you probably should just quit because your merc is going to really, really struggle if you have budget gear to kill all of those freaking souls. They're fast. He gets decrepified from bail, so he moves slow as molasses. Sometimes he'll be cold enchanted, and then he'll be even slower. If there's no souls, easy as hell. There's no problems with the light sork, no infinity. If there's no souls waiting for you in the throw room, that's your area. You live there. The only one that could potentially be an issue is the last wave of those orc minion freaking... I almost did sound effects, but I don't want to do a pig. <laughs> those guys, sometimes the main one there will be light immune. But all you have to do is telekinesis him and your merc will handle him. Bale has the ability to drop high item level stuff. Item level is important. It allows for a greater opportunity to roll some dope shint. This includes charms. If you find a charm from Bale, it's a good idea to save it, especially if it's a grand charm or a small charm, as you can re-roll this in your Herodric cube with P-gems like I have. I'm up to like 3,000 P-gems of re-rolling a Bale grand charm. I haven't rolled anything worth anything, uh, so you can do it. It's like a little gamble addiction I have. Maybe you'll get a 45 life paladin combat grand charm, but I know I won't. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll take all my luck after watching this video. There is a lot more stuff I'm sure I could talk about. There is a lot of things I probably missed. I am definitely not the best player in the world. I don't ever claim to be. I like having fun doing videos. I miss doing them. It's been a long time since I've done one. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to like, comment, click, subscribe, all of that cool stuff. Make me feel better about my life. I... <laughs> <laughs> life's good just keeping up with the video schedule is hard i appreciate it hopefully i will see you on the next one until next time we out